I built these three robots using aluminium extrusion and I like the material a lot, but every time I design for it, I have so many questions like which profile size do I pick, which fasteners do I use, and even which connector types are the best for this particular design. So I'm going to walk you through all the design choices I made for my third Acrobot and uh, you'll have to watch until the end of the video if you want to know if they're good choices or not. Hi, my name is Daniel and you are watching the first in a short video series about the Acrobot. This is an acrobatic robot that I perform with and I'm originally a circus artist but thanks to YouTube videos I was able to learn robotics. And with these short technical explanations I want to give back to this community. So full disclosure, I was given some of the extrusion for free by alexprofile.com but I don't even know that I'm making this video so all the opinions here are my own. And even before they sponsored me I was already buying their materials because I really like them. When you start with the design the first thing you need to decide is the profile size. 2020 is very common on small machines like for example a 3D printer but there's also 3030 and 4040 which you might want to use if you're building something like a desk or something that carries a lot of weight and for all these sizes there's also double profile width to consider. But I actually started out with 1515 which is a smaller size and I used it on my first robot but 1515 also uses these fiddly M3 screws whereas 2020 uses M6 size which is much stronger and that's why ultimately I designed my later robots with this material. I talk much more about the hardware difference between these two in my previous video which is also linked somewhere in the description. In the previous video I also recommended friction fits with button heads. It's where you slide a button head into the slot and then you can tighten it if you drill a hole through it. You can tighten it with a wrench and make a really tight and cheap connection that is very strong. But one thing I didn't realize then is that you can actually still twist the beam. If for some reason it's not locked on the other side or whatever, you can twist it and it loosens very, very easily. That is one of the reasons why for the new robot I chose to use these three-way corner pieces. And I have one over here. They have these little ridges on the edge and those ridges slot into the slots. And that means that once it's pressed together, and of course you also need to add a bolt, but already now I can't twist the piece which doesn't allow it to spin loose. I still use the friction fit, I use it for example here above this beam, but also in the back, which was a bit of a mistake because there's this plexiglass, which means that I can't access the bolt from the top if I want to tighten it. And I do want to tighten it sometimes because the whole robot vibrates so much that every bolt needs to be tightened periodically. Of course in the back you can't see the corner pieces because there's these handles, but that's why I designed these holes so you can still access the corner pieces that are behind it, they just go through like that. And then the last thing I needed to decide are the kind of nuts I wanted to use in the slots. There's three types of nuts that you can use. The twist nut, the roll-in nut and the slide nut. And the first two are the most flexible because you can place them in the middle of the beam. For example, this twist nut you place and then you twist it and it automatically locks itself in place. And this is super convenient. That's the one I started with. But it turns out that if you want to actually use it, you usually cover it with something and then you can no longer see if it twisted correctly. You have to feel if it twisted all the way. And in some cases, if it doesn't twist, then it stays loose and that is a risk when you design something that needs to be tight. So instead, I chose to go for the roll-in nuts. And the roll-in nuts have a ball spring on the end that make it lock in place. And you can roll them in from the side of a profile. You use a little something like a screwdriver and then with a bit of force, it pops into place and then it can still slide with a bit of force. They're quite convenient to place in, but they're really hard to remove out. Even with a lot of force, sometimes I can't manage to get them. Maybe there's a trick that I haven't discovered yet, but the few that I did manage to remove damaged my extrusion a lot and I didn't like that. So on the places where I already knew that I needed to place something anyway, I placed the slide nut. So this takes some planning because you can often no longer exit the sides after you mount something. But on the places that I knew ahead of time that I needed to mount something, the slide nut has been really helping me. The only downside is that it also slides freely because it doesn't have a spring. So sometimes it's hard to, if you have multiple holes, to align them all correctly. I ordered my extrusion pre-cut to size because it's really difficult to make perfectly straight cuts yourself and you need straight cuts for perfect connections. That means I need to design the whole thing first in 3D to know all my dimensions and that takes away some flexibility. But even then still, I don't, for example, know exactly where I want to place the holes for this handle and with T profile I can do that easily or later on I decided that I need this relay and I was able to make a holder for it really easily and I even changed the way I mounted a few of the points. In the end the frame is light, very rigid and the material is very easy to prototype with so I'm very happy with my choice to use aluminium extrusion for this particular project. This was only a summary of what I've learned about aluminium extrusion. I hope that it was of use for you and if you have more questions feel free to ask them in the comments perhaps I can help you with it. 
Um, if you want to know more about the robot, I'm actually making more videos about different technical aspects of it. This was about the frame, but if you want to see other parts, do subscribe, like the video, and um, hopefully see you in the next one.